time introduced by council member Debian. Okay, thank you. Um, I actually did not put this on the agenda for today. Somebody else did. Um, but I see that uh, Ms. Mallow is here and I believe that um, we have invited Ms. Catrunio, but oh, there she is. Um, I'm, I probably, and I want to thank Ms. Mallow for joining us. Um, but Ms. Catrunio actually has been working on this bill uh, and has reviewed it a couple of times. And she now, and I know Ms. Mallow does as well, um, has an updated version of the bill. And uh, I am not sure how many of the council members have the revised version because we just received it. Well, actually, I don't think we have uh, yeah, we do have the actual um, amendment that we got this morning, uh, late this morning. So we tried to send it out. Is there anybody who has not gotten a copy on the council who would like to see a copy of the amendments? If so I mean, I figure if we're going to, so if we're, we're going to talk about it in the work session, we, so one of two things, if you want, you could share your screen and we could look at the amendment as it's you know, forthcoming or whomever could just, you know, the administrator could forward it to the council as a whole. Um, yes, I was going to ask, I don't have um, a revised version I that I can find. Yeah, I, from the yeah, team. So if she could yeah, send it or the administrator, it'd be good to see it. Can you do that, uh, Ms. Harrod? The revised version, the amended version of the bill of CB9. Um, basically, uh, and the school board people are here, so correct me certainly if um, you, if I'm mischaracterizing anything that I have learned thus far from the school district. The school district was concerned that we had um, put in the word solution, secured a reassignment or capacity solution. And um, I agreed with them that uh, that language was strong and could certainly be misinterpreted even though that was not what was intended. What was intended as we have, as I have stated all along, um, that this would be an opportunity for a um, developer who is uh, coming to us for a hearing on an APFO waiver that the council is required to hold by statute would have met with the school district beforehand and would have real information to share with us, not information as it turns out um, from our last experience was uh, incorrect. So um, it also may have appeared from the original language that whatever it was that the school district uh, discussed with the developer who is seeking this APFA waiver, that the school district would somehow have been stuck with that strategy originally the language was solution and that um, they would have to move on whatever it was that they stated in that report that would also be contributed to by DPZ who would share with the school district any um, proposed developments that were also going to go into that area that could impact the uh, school enrollments. And um, so we wanted to make sure that the school system understood that they were not reserving anything, they were not committing to anything, they were simply giving information that would allow us, the council, to make uh, a real decision as opposed to a decision regarding information that was not accurate or up to date. And it still may be that some of the information is not 
totally accurate and up to date if the um, the developer is seeking that information, say, a year in advance. But we can always seek an update from the school district or from DPZ who has um, agreed to participate in this process um, without uh, just said, yeah, we're happy to do it. So it's really now just a matter of at least from my perspective, timing, um, and when this report actually is created and maybe even a, another line or two that says we would need an update. Um, there was some testimony the other night. Um, one of the things that was said that this would require every developer who wants to develop affordable housing to have to go through this whole process. And again, this is only developers who are seeking APFA waivers. And right now, there is only one developer who's seeking an APFA waiver. That developer has sought one APFA waiver, and that APFA waiver was listened to by the county council, and we agreed to grant that APFA waiver. There is... Um, a second APFA waiver that they are going to be seeking, uh, again, um, for the schools in the same neighborhood. Um, but uh, Ms. Simino had asked us to grandfather in the, um, the uh, process that exists right now, which is no process. So. We agreed to also add in grandfathering language that would allow um, the developer not to have to actually go through this process in the next year or two. Um, so that's kind of an update. We've heard from the Department of Housing. We heard from DPZ. We have Ms. Catrunio and um, Ms. Mallow on the on the uh, meeting with us today virtually, and uh, that's where we stand. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Young, for giving the overview. Ms. Rigby, I see your hand, um, and I wanna get a chance for other council members to uh, speak or ask questions, and we have several invitees today from the Board of Education, um, as well as um, the school system and others as well. So, Ms. Rigby. Please. Um, I was just reading the, the bill version and was confused about some of the lines, but then um, Ms. Hara just sent the additional amendment, so I will read through that. Um, I think that was my confusion. I thought I was looking at an updated bill, but I didn't understand what the update was. But now I have the amendment before me, so I will, I will read uh, and listen. Okay, thank you, Ms. Rigby. Um, Mr. Youngman or Ms. Walsh? Sorry, I'm almost done reading. Okay. Hold, please. Can we ask Ms. Katrina why, to, to comment on it while everybody is reading? Sure. Okay. Since she's here and she worked on this a little bit. Ms. Katrina? I'm sorry, my wife. I should have stayed out. My Wi-Fi is crazy. Um, Mr. Youngman, can you do something about the Wi-Fi in Western Harvard County, please? <laughs> Where, I got it. I, maybe, but not down in the uh, in the deep down valley in the, that the you're valley. probably sitting in. That is your house. <laughs> the, the downward slope of my driveway. Um, you would no, need a large I tower there. I was out all day, so I have not read it. So I don't know if Ms. Mallow has had a chance. Okay, Ms. Mallow, the, have you read it? The school system was the language. That's I have had the chance to read it. So, and, and that's actually what I was going to say is perhaps it's best to have staff who worked on the language speak, and that would primarily be Danielle Luking, um, but we also have Office of School Planning and um, School Construction on. So at this point, since the board hasn't taken a position on this bill, um, I think I would like to defer to either Ms. Luking or Mr. Lubley 
and can answer specific questions uh, once they have spoken to the question. Oh, I didn't see them there. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mello. Uh, maybe Ms. Luking, because Danielle has been yeah. very involved in this with us. Of course, I'll start. Um, Danielle looking at Legislative and Legal Affairs Officer for the Howard County School System. So we have had the opportunity, um, thank you Ms. Young for including us in discussions on this bill. We have had the chance to look at the original and as Ms. Young noted, there were some concerns mainly with the language of solution, but also just in general, how would this impact the school system um, and what would it do for the the flow in terms of, of getting these through to the council or what it is that the council is looking for in terms of this feedback. So we did work with um, Ms. Young's staff on the language to try and address that word specifically solution. And I, I also just got the language of the bill, so um, I'm just reading through it. Um, so if our, our staff wants to add anything to that, Mr. Lubley. Certainly, thank you. Uh, Dan Lubley, Director of Capital Planning and Construction. Uh, thank you for the question and thank you for the amendment that was sent through. As I look through the amendment, I do think it does reflect the prior discussions that we did have um, with the County Council staff. I do think that Ms. Young, Deb Young has um, represented the concerns that were expressed previously as well as at the public hearing very well. I think at this point, it probably does come down to a timing issue of when this meeting would take place and what information is present at that time. And what I mean by that, I believe at the, the public hearing, it was noted by one of the testifiers that if a developer is meeting with the school system and the office or Department of Planning and Zoning early on, prior to the tax credits and the federal grants, that they may not have a firm grasp on the true scope of the development. So at that point, the information that's provided might not be exact to what they're gonna build. So the Office of School Planning and DPZ can do some work at that time. However, the variables may change by the time it does come to um, the County Council, which Council Member Young did note potentially asking for an update at that time as well. But I do think the amended language here does represent the prior uh, communications that we have had. Thank you, Mr. Lubley. I thought we had very productive conversations. That Thank includes you, you too, Danielle. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I saw Mr. Youngman's hand. I wanna, oh, 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 we're not done with that question? I don't really have anything to add. I think when we were trying to figure out who was gonna talk next, I had gotten through the amendment and it looks like that, you know, the big change is that, that need to identify a solution so many years out that seemed problematic has been eliminated. All, we're, all, 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 all this bill really does is, is force everybody to sit down and have a meeting so that three, four, five years down the road when the tax credit shows up and we are kind of in this position of you have to approve it or lose the tax credit or whatever that we know that the developer and the school system have been talking for several years about how the thing's progressing. So yeah, I, I don't know if that's an accurate representation of where the bill is now, but it seems like it is. I would agree. That is a very accurate representation. Ms. Rigby? Um, so I guess one of my questions was going to be, what would be a reasonable time frame for HCPSS to um, have this meeting and then provide the letter? Um, just in reviewing it, I think that having a timeline that everyone knows how to follow and what the expectations are would, would certainly help. Would 30 days be a reasonable timeline for HCPSS to, to write this letter? Uh, I, would, I would like to um, push that question over to Mr. Rogers just to confirm um, as we get the information in, it would be up to school planning to go through and look at where we are in our current projections and add that information. So Mr. Rogers, if you could clarify a time in which that would take. 
Uh, yeah, thank you. I, I would think 30 days would be reasonable. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then addressing one thing that Mr. Youngman just said. So it sounds like they'll have this meeting. They'll go through the solutions or strategies or not Whatever solutions, Ms. Rigby. <laughs> strategies. strategies. Don't use that word solutions, please. <laughs> we'll go through strategies. Um, and then they will write this letter. But then, Mr. Youngman, you made it sound like it could be three, four years before they come back before the council. Well, yeah. I don't think they come to the council at all unless they still need the APFO waiver. And right. if they do need that APFO waiver, my understanding is it, it can take that long from the time they decide to apply for one of these tax credits to the time they're ready to come to us for that request. I mean, if it's faster, that's great because obviously there's less risk, the, the, you know, the, the quicker that that comes together. But I, I, is, is the three or four years not representative of how long it takes to go through that application process? I don't know. I got that. That is not a question that I could answer, but yeah. I think my concern would be, um, you know, given, and I know that this body has gone very deep on how HCPSS does its um, student population rates, but we're even looking at birth cohorts. I mean, I think one of the most interesting um, data pieces I've seen is how Oakland Mills was overcrowded because they had a large senior class and then they became undercrowded because they had a small freshman class. Um, you know, they graduated and then came in. So if we're looking over the span of four years, I guess I'm just wondering how does the landscape change within those four years and how does that impact the discussion, the strategy, and the council part if we're looking at a timeline? Well, my view is that um, they could come in. Um, and I, I did get the impression it, it could be, it was more likely a couple of years but it could be closer in time. And that, um, that given, I, and I think one of the problems actually with Enterprise was that they were told that they could have 300 allocations. And then I think that to a certain extent, there might've been a thought that they were gonna be more evenly spaced out than they actually are and over 100 of those allocations were going into their very first uh, a set of apartment buildings over at Roslyn Rise. So that sort of led to this, um, I think, a little bit of an unusual situation where uh, there might have been this thought that it was going to be overcrowded combined with some other things too. But I think that there's you know, it shouldn't be that big of a deal once DPZ and the school district have taken a look at the neighborhoods and they know what's coming down the pike. It's not like suddenly something new is going to come in of, well, actually, right. I shouldn't say that. Actually, in my neighborhood, something new could come in with 500 units. So that may not be all that accurate, but... We could have another really well, big development. It would be interesting to see the process that would allow for that. But, yes. Um, yes. So, I, I mean, but generally speaking, you're not going to come, you're not going to have something come in with 500 units that's unique to that area that DPZ wouldn't already know about. And I think it just doing a little update, and maybe that's what we, maybe that's something I should add that if the original um, meeting or report occurred, two years previous to when they are seeking their APFA waiver that they'll need to seek an update. Okay. Thank you. All right, great, great discussion. I um, wanted to make sure that other council members have a chance to chime in also. Oh, by the way, I have Jahan Tab Siddiqui uh, as one of the members. Are the, uh, is that like a, the main invitee and then anyone from the school system? Is that how that worked, Ms. Harrod? because I didn't see. Um, then I also have um, Tom Cole, Mackenzie Kissio, and Brian McLaughlin. I want to make sure they get a chance to uh, jump in before our time is up for this agenda item. So um, is, is Mr. Siddiqui here? We don't have or, Mr. Or does... We don't have Mr. Siddiqui. Oh, okay. I think his representatives have 
um, Got it. participate. Okay. Okay. That, that's what that's what I figured. I, I just wasn't sure. Uh, if anyone knows, um, if anyone doesn't know, work session invitees sometimes they're well prepared, well organized. Sometimes people are flowing in and out, and um, just trying to manage a spreadsheet. That's all. So sorry about that. Um, but yeah, let's hear from um, uh, maybe Tom Cole or Mackenzie Kissio or Brian McLaughlin. Anyone want to chime in? Thank you. I'll, I'll be brief. I, I just want to emphasize for the council that this bill, I, I would strongly encourage you to consider this bill and reconsider this bill in the context of low income housing tax credits, those that actually apply for these competitive credits, which is how federal dollars come in and help us build our affordable housing stock. Because right now, no one from Enterprise has seen this new version of the bill. And it seems like there is a strong bias towards making sure the school system is involved in the process and participating in writing this bill. Yet Enterprise, a nonprofit affordable housing provider that was founded in Columbia and is redeveloping Columbia's affordable housing stock, is not getting an equal seat at the table. Um, also, it was mentioned that no one knew that 100 units might be assigned to Rosalind Rise. That was explicitly written into the decision and order written by the zoning board that up to 100 units could go on that site. And actually, there was a minimum that no more than a certain number of units could go off that site. So I just had to correct that. Also, Enterprise is not the only entity seeking these adequate public facilities waivers. Greenfield's development, which this council recently approved an APTO waiver for them. Also, you have Patuxent Commons that is in the pipe. That is likely going to be seeking an adequate public facilities waiver with federal tax credits coming to bear. Um, I just, I hope this council takes some caution before putting additional red tape on these, on these applications because the way it is set up, even out how it's amended, there is nothing that is going to stop the, the submission of the tax credits based on this meeting with the school system. And also respectfully, the information that was incorrect that we dealt with on Rosalind Rise was information coming from the school system. We had three different sets of data. It wasn't enterprise and it wasn't anyone from enterprise misrepresenting or giving wrong data. It was we had three different sets of data because the school system makes its decisions based on three different sets of attendance data. So I'm not sure what will be cured by this legislation that will make it so the school system does not have three sets of data in the future. What enterprise has proposed which I think is a reasonable middle ground here is that when these tax credits are applied for, and Mr. Youngman, it is not three to five years. Often the time between these tax credits being applied for and then being used to finance the closing of a deal can be within two years, sometimes within a year. Um, so these things are nimble. They, they are tight. Um, and so that, that is why uh, we're concerned. But the compromise that we would love to see struck here is that when the application is submitted, the school system is notified. And maybe that will be the time that a meeting can be had to talk about whatever might need to be talked about at this meeting. It would seem to me that the school system has the data, whether or not they sit down with my client or not. Um, and I, I would again repeat that I hope the council is cautious before you try to have developers, whether they be nonprofit developers or otherwise, sitting down with designees from the superintendent's office and then being even more involved in the development process. So th th this bill is very problematic. I think that's why you saw overwhelming opposition to this bill at the public testimony from just about every public housing and affordable housing provider that we have in this county and everyone who cares about affordable housing. Um, but I, I suppose sooner or later we'll get to see these amendments and we'll be able to say whether or not uh, it will work in actually providing affordable housing or if this bill will ultimately just close down this narrow avenue through which affordable housing is provided. Well, Mr. Cole, I don't see how this could possibly uh, close down this narrow avenue through which affordable housing is being provided. It has no, it has no impact whatsoever on closing down any avenues. It is simply an opportunity to obtain information in a timely manner. And I will ask my office to send you the, um, the revised version of this. Uh, I think that getting accurate information from the school district should be um, that, that the developers should take part in that process. Um, and that because it's, after all, it is the developer 
who would be, who's seeking the APFA waiver because their development is going to overcrowd that school. And I do think that the county council should know what the information is regarding the schools in this area. And every single development you just mentioned that has sought APFA waivers are all within about two miles of each other and all attending approximately the same schools. So this could end up being an even bigger problem in the future. And at some point, it might be that the developers will need to look for another, la another neighborhood besides the one that surrounds the Wild Lake Swansfield area to try and find a place to build more affordable housing. But that's another issue. That's down the road. But for now, I think getting the developer involved with the school district in the APFO process is not too much to ask. The, the way the legislation was originally written would have shut down this avenue because we would have had to get a capacity solution from the school system. And I've told you over and over language. again that that is not what the language states. That so, is what the original bill said. And that is not what it says now. We have not seen that. And I have just asked my office to send it to you. Thank you. Okay, great. Great, great discussion. Um, I want to make sure that... Um, Let's see, see some more people popping up, maybe for the next bill. I just want to make sure everyone gets a chance to speak. Um, we have Mackenzie Kissio and Brian McLaughlin. And also I'm looking at hands from council members if you have anything as well. Um, Mackenzie Kissio or Brian McLaughlin, are you here? Or do you wish, do you wish to say anything or if not? Uh, yes, here. Brian, did you did you want to chime in at all? I just have one uh, kind of additional comment that I, I might add. Okay, um, sounds like he is uh, not available at this moment. Um, one sort of practical issue that I wanted to raise is um, when a development is going in for its tax credit application, um, it could very well be that the current school capacity chart says that um, we are, they are uh, good to go uh, and will not require an APFO waiver. And then that could change as of uh, the next, I guess it would be July when it's um, adopted. And uh, I, I'm not sure how that would be treated under this bill. Um, so I think that that's uh, potentially another timing issue here. Um, uh, th again, uh, that may be, um, may be better served by a simple notice to um, the school board at the time of application or to, rather to the superintendent and then a meeting um, subsequently. Just wanted to raise that. Okay, thank you, Ms. Kissio. All right, any other council members wish to chime in or anyone else from the Board of Education, staff, HCPSS staff, any follow-ups? Okay, going once, going twice. All right, Ms. Young, since this is your bill, do you wanna give a final word? Um, I, you know, I'm certainly happy to look at timing of this. Uh, and I we've asked actually a number of times now for Enterprise to get us some language. So I hope that you all would help us figure that out more specifically. Um, I think that that would be a, a way in which to put the, I hope would be the, um, the final pieces of this bill together so that we can get it passed um, in, on February 7th. So I, I welcome you again to um, set up a meeting with me or send us some language whatever you think would be helpful. And uh, I assume that means that you also don't have a copy yet of the revised bill. Is that correct, Mackenzie? That's correct. Okay, so we'll have our office, I'll have my office send you the revised bill too so that you can see it. Thank you very much. 
All right. All right. Thank you so much.